welcome to more coverage of the 2015 Audi R8 LMS Cup as the series returns to Malaysia, home of reigning champion Alex Yong. But Alex likes just fourth in the driver's standings at the halfway point in what is turning into the most competitive season in the Cup's history. Coming up in the program, the Malaysian master will show us around the Sepan International Circuit. First though, let's check out some sights and sounds from here in Malaysia. After races in Zhuhai, Korea and Taiwan, the grid is ready for the second half of the season. But with half a dozen drivers still with realistic championship chances, it's anyone's guess who will win this year's title. Halfway through the 2015 season, the Audi R8 LMS Cup is proving to be the most competitive year yet, with six different winners in as many races. But it's been the new kids on the block who have shaken up the existing order. Aditya Patel's consistent results have seen him rise to the top of the standings with 80 points, even though he's the only one of the Cup's top six drivers who has yet to score an outright victory. He'll be going to put that right as he makes his sports car debut here in Sepang. Fellow Cup rookie Thomas Fjordbach is just four points behind in the standings and heads to Malaysia fresh off his Maiden Cup victory in the last round. Another eight points back is Chinese motorsport star Frankie Cheng on 68 points. He found his groove in Taiwan last time out with three podium finishes in the Cup's first ever triple header. Hot on their heels comes Malaysian hero and reigning champion Alex Jung, who has a history of doing well in front of his home fans as he bids to get his title defence back on track. Female Swiss GT specialist Rahel Frey rounds out the top five and makes a welcome return to the Cup, having missed the three races in Penn Bay due to Audi commitments in Germany. Having scored a thrilling victory in round four earlier in this season, Frey will be hungry to get back into the points. And don't count out 2012 Audi R8 LMS Cup champion Marchi Lee, who lies in seventh place. The Wiley veteran from Hong Kong is as competitive as they come and will be keen to mount a challenge for his second championship title in the second half of the season. Qualifying for round eight was as close as usual, with the top eight drivers from the initial qualifying session getting one more single lap to post their best time in the Super Pole shootout. After Aditya Patel laid down a marker, the final three drivers all set progressively quicker times, meaning Alex Jung will start third, Marchi Lee moves into second, and Frankie Cheng continues his recent run of good form with pole position. This talented international field is raring to go following the summer break, and with Sepang known for its long straights and high-speed corners, there are guaranteed to be fireworks on the track. Sepan is consistently one of the hottest circuits on the calendar, with the tropical heat and humidity creating oppressive conditions for the drivers. And with the races in Taiwan last time out also held in soaring temperatures, the heat is increasingly an element the drivers must tackle head on. Our reporter Mark Dreyer takes a look. I start training intensively for the hot condition race already two weeks before. I switch off the aircon at home just to do the same amount of endurance training so that my body get used to this temperature. I basically do five sessions a week. Um, I do two sessions with a personal trainer on strength, flexibility, Pilates, core work, neck work. Uh, two sessions with a physio on flexibility. And then another cardio session in the heat up the peak in Hong Kong. Um, just to really push myself for a couple of hours in those conditions. At the hottest part of the day, temperatures here can reach more than 35 degrees Celsius. Track temperatures can hit 60 degrees, and inside the car, it can be close to 70. That makes it incredibly tough for these drivers to stay focused as they tear around the circuit at speeds of up to 260 kilometers per hour. There's many incidents happened in the hot race. It's not related to the car, it's just pure because the driver itself get tired and emotionally and also completely mixed up. It can be quite dangerous and we've seen in races before where, where drivers will start to hallucinate. You can do 25 minutes and make okay, you can do a good job, but after that 
The last 10 minutes, 15 minutes become very difficult. They lose concentration, their blood pressure rises, the heart rate rises, and they can't make decisions. So it's very important they stay cool. I must say Taiwan uh, was the hottest race I ever experienced in my life. I think Taiwan, I was dropping three kilos per race. Luckily, we're here in Sepang, one race after Taiwan. So now we are, feel, we are feeling here it's like in Switzerland. Fortunately in Taiwan I managed to get uh, my cool shirt brought over. The cool shirt works because it's got piping woven through the fabric which basically then connects to a cool box with ice and water in it with an end with a motor in it and that pumps cool water through the vest. In the hot condition the tires worn faster than the cold condition and also in the cold condition when the tire up to temperature and the pressure actually the grip level is better than in the hot condition. It takes two to three laps to be at uh, full, uh, full temperature. And when you look at qualification, the best lap is normally done uh, in the second, third, maybe fourth laps. Heat is a performance killer. Engines like you know, a cool air charge into the motor. The hotter the air coming in, the less power you make. Um, tires, again, with the, the surface temperatures we have here, the tire degradation is much faster. If the driver can manage the tire well on the first lap, uh, it will pay back at the end of the run. Opened in 1999, Sepang is the first of the new generation of F1 circuits, known for its long streets and high-speed corners as a track that pushes drivers to the limit. But one man who knows it better than most is former F1 driver Alex Yong. Earlier, he showed us some of his favorite corners on the track and how to drive them. This is the Sepang International Circuit. It's my home track and it's also one of my favorite tracks in the world. It's a great track to drive, it's very exciting, but not only is it exciting, it also has a lot of action, you have a lot of overtaking here. In the background, you see the long start finish straight. It's over a kilometer long. And through this long straight, you often get a lot of people slipstreaming each other to overtake into here, which is turn one. Now turn one's very exciting. Um, not only is, can you go around down the inside of someone, you can also go around the outside of someone. If you can manage to hang around the outside of someone through this long turn one, then you've got a very tight turn two, which is a left-hander after it. So you'll be on the inside for that turn. So we do see a lot of action on this corner. Guys going down three abreast even. It's a great corner to watch, especially at the start. Now this is my favorite part of the track. This is turns five and six. Now just have a look at how much rubber has been laid down through turn five. That's because the car's going through here at about 200 kilometers per hour extremely fast and you think that it's over at this point but it's not because it bleeds straight into turn six which is equally fast right hander just here and if you get it wrong at these sort of speeds you're in for a very big off in fact if you look in the distance you can see how close the wall is to the uh, end of the road so if you do make a mistake you could end up in that wall okay now we're at turn nine which is about two-thirds of the way around the track you see this medium length straight cars are hitting about 240 kilometers per hour for braking for this tight hairpin, 60 kilometers per hour this tight hairpin. So because of these big braking, you always see guys trying to mug someone, go dive down the inside from very much a late braking opportunity. So a lot of action here as they try and funnel through this very tight hairpin, which then moves uphill just a little bit, the only little bit of gradient on the track. Okay, now we're at turn 14, which is the penultimate corner on the track. It's also the most difficult corner on the track. You can see it leads in here and you kind of go in, go back out and come back into the apex so over here behind me. It's kind of blind, it's very hard to know when to turn in and it makes it very tricky. And what makes it so tough is there's so much understeer through this first part of this corner, but you have to somehow get on the power because you need to be on the power to get on it early so that you can be quick out of this corner because we have this massive long straight behind me. And if you're slow out of this corner, you are going to get overtaken down this last long straight before the last corner. Well, those are the main points on the track to pay attention to. Let's find out how the drivers cope in the first race of the weekend. So the famous Formula One circuit here at Sepang, 15 turns, it's five and a half kilometers long with those famous corners of Genting, Sunway Lagoon and the KLIA curve. 
And here's how they line up for round eight. Frankie Chen is in the front row with March Lee, followed by Alex Young, the series leader Aditya Patel, followed by Rahul Fry and KOU. The second half of the field is with Kimi Chen, followed by Johnson Huang, and Rick Yun from South Korea is in the final position on the grid. And it's race time in Sepang. Now, can Frankie Chen keep Marchi Lee away from the lead? Now, Rahul Fry is having some pressure from Thomas Fuel back as they come into the first turn. Here's Alex Jung. They're three wide. So you've got uh, Alex Jung and Frankie Chen having a little bit of contact. Marchi Lee's on the wide outside. Now, who's going to get into turn two? It looks like Marchi Lee now has the inside line coming out of turn two. So Marchi Lee is in the lead. Oh, he just steps outside. He's just had a bang against Aditya Patel, the serious leader. It looks like he's out of the race and Alex Jung has capitalized. Let's just take a look and ride with Aditya Patel here. You can see contact between Frankie Chen and Alex Jung. Marchalee's on your left-hand side. Now Marchalee takes the lead. Aditya Patel tries to follow him through, coming out of turn two. And there you can see, oh, Marchalee just spears Aditya Patel in the side. And Alex Jung in the lead here from Frankie Chen. Here comes Fjord back. There is KOU. KOU's trying to get into third place. Fjordmax fighting back, but I think KOU secured third P3. Now coming down into turn one, Marchi Lee is really gunning for a podium position. Dives in between here, contact with KOU, manages to secure that position. Now Raoul Fry sees the opportunity. Adir Patel just uh, saying what happened to him there. Coming down, and it is in P2, Marchi Lee from... Frankie Chen, Alex Jung way out in front. He's built up a healthy lead here from March Lee, KOU, and Rahul Fry. Now March Lee's really used his pushes to passes to the maximum here. He's right up against Alex Jung. This is going to be an exciting finish to this race round eight of the Audi R8 LMS Cup. It looks now Alex Jung soaked up with the pressure and now he's pulling away from March Lee down into turn one here's the fight for p3 can frankie chen keep rahul fry at bay rahul comes on the inside is she going to secure this place coming into turn two and rahul slams the door on frankie rahul fry is now on the podium this is the fight for the amateur class we've now got daniel bilski versus andrew kim kim tries to come up on the inner at turn one bilski's got the advantage and gets through turn two and he's still leading the amateur class now KOU and Frankie Chen they're gonna have a battle into a first turn Frankie's on the inside KOU's on the outside you've got to think Frankie can keep the South Korean behind him down into turn two no KOU's got that position and here comes the Malaysian master Alex Jung he wins round eight of the Audi R8 LMS Cup from March Lee. And there's a whole train of cars now coming round turn 15. Just look at them. There's about top seven all finishing within 13 seconds of each other. And Stefan Montesi, that's a great drive there. He finishes in seventh place. So once I saw Marchi catch up, and he's got less faith than me, I knew he was quick. But I knew he'd use his push to passes to get to me. So I was just, I got 14 left. So I just used them the last few laps and I was able to maintain the gap. And in the amateur division, Andrew Kim from South Korea beats Daniel Bilski of Australia with Alex Au in third place. The defending champion bounces back at his home track and takes the lead in the overall title by winning round eight from March Lee and Rahul Fry. Adita Patel did not even finish one lap. He had a horrid race and scores no points for the overall championship going into round nine. As technology has improved over the years, one area that's seen direct benefits for the drivers is the onboard camera footage. Let's find out how the drivers use this to get faster on the track. This lap's actually better here because you... But I use you, uh, a higher gear. Yes. This morning you were using third and now using fourth. Yeah. You can see the difference, eh? OK. 
camera position will show the position of your car relative to the position of somebody else's car. So if you can see that somebody else is actually one meter a bit further this way, you should be one meter this way. So it's, it's a very useful tool for showing them where the proper line should be. We're able to align the two videos from two different cars or a lap, two, two different laps of chemis together. And you can just select the laps and have a look at them. So it makes it really easy for us to to see you know, where he's game time and how he's done it. It's most important is when you're on the brand new track, so you don't know, basically you never run there, and then the data they will tell you everything. Also they can compile your lap and other top drivers. He always says to me, give me my lap and the fastest lap. <laughs> so he's, he's always trying to sort of compare himself to the fastest guys. When I'm not 100% sure about my driving line, so I check other onboard videos from, let's say, for example, Alex Young or Marci Lee, so you can compare the, the, the driving line. When I started, there was no onboard, there was no data, you just had to rely on a driver. And when it came along, you thought, ah, I don't need that, I don't need that, but it's actually really useful. You can see where on the track you're making mistakes, so it's, it's really, really important. You need to focus on the corners that you're having a problem, and you know, within 10 minutes, you know the answer. Another important point is to check where my braking points are. So I use the video for um, setting reference points on track and then I always check here the screen line is when it's when I'm on full power, so the point when I'm um, fully accelerated again. As a driver, you don't always want to show everything, right, to the others. So, but in the end, it's fully controlled. I mean, you can't lie about anything. The driver has to think twice before he blames somebody else. And their perception of what happens sometimes is very different to reality. So, yeah, the camera also shows this up sometimes. It's great to see how even the top drivers like Rahul Fry are still looking to improve wherever they can. Let's go now and check out all the action from round nine. The defending champion has regained the lead and starts from P1 from Marchley, KOU and Stefan Matesi on row two. Row three is filled by Rahul Fry and Thomas Fjordback. Due to round nine's grid positions ranked by best times, Aditya Patel did not finish one lap so has to start from the back of the grid. Lights out and it's the start of round nine here at Sepang. Alex Jung's on the left hand side, March Lee's on the right hand side, Stefan Amantesi there. The 39 cars trying to get a flyer from Frankie Chen and here comes Rahul Fry on the inside in the green car. Is she going to get P3? She's on the charge around the turn one and it's Alex Jung from March Lee and Rahul Fry is in P3. Okay, let's now ride with Aditya Patel from the start. He finds the Golden Highway, he goes past one. He's on the charge, he needs to get past through all these amateurs. He's past four already within 200 meters of the start. He's now getting past Daniel Bilski. Alex Jun trying to control the pace here from Marchi Lee. Here comes Fuel back with Rahul Fry. Let's now ride with Rahul Fry. You're on the front bumper of a car. Marchi Lee goes past Alex Jung there, but Marchi too aggressive and drops a place and Rahul Fry is into P2. So Alex Jung's got that extra 50 kg in his car. Rahul Fry is in second place as they come through turn four with Marchi Lee. And there goes Frankie Chen. He's got past Thomas Fjordback. He's now in P4. Rahul Fry trying to get past Alex Jung. Goes on the inside around this tight little turn uphill. She's got the momentum and she goes through. Alex Young's trying to fight back, but he's got that extra dead weight in the car. And Rahul Fry seals the leader's position. Now March Lee, he knows he can get past Alex Young quite easily, probably using some pushing passing there. Rahul Fry, March Lee trying to gun her down. He wants a win here at Sepang. Here goes Frankie Chen making a move on Alex Young coming into turn one. Nicely passed there. Frankie Chen now fills the podium position. Marchelli's on the charge. He's on the inside of Rahul Fry here coming into turn four. Is this going to be the winning move for round nine? He makes it stick. Here's Thomas Fjordback. He's gone in hard at turn 15. Montesi and KOU, they're duking it out. Fjordback span there. Coming out down the home straight. 
And there they go, clash together, Montese and KOU. They battle out for position. Raul Fry's now got some pressure from Frankie Chen here. This is the battle for P2 and P3. Is Frankie going to make that manoeuvre stick down this long home straight here at Sepang? Marcelli still leading and Frankie second and Raul third. And that's KOU. And Alex Owl looks like he's actually collided there with KOU, the South Korean. So they're both out of the race. Now Frankie Chen sizing up March Lee. This could be the winning manoeuvre. Can he get past March Lee? Oh, no, he can't because of Alex Owl's car. He's got a yellow flag, which means he can't overtake March Lee down pit straight. This is desperately bad luck for Frankie. He's got to allow March Lee to go into turn one in the lead. And the stricken car has probably ruined Frankie Chen's chance of winning. Another line, March Lee wins round nine here at Sepang from Frankie Chen and Rahul Fry fills up the podium. Uh, today, I get a speed. I show you in the race one. I show you in race two. So it's time for a drink now. I'm very pleased. I managed to move up my grade from P7, finishing P2. But I must say that uh, I was also very unlucky with this yellow fly on the main straight. In the amateur class, Andrew Kim won both races this weekend. Daniel Bilski was runner-up twice, but he leaves the amateur class going to Fuji our next round in mid-October. Here's the overall results then for round nine. March Lee wins from Frankie Chen and Rahul Fry. Alex Yuen, well, he started first but finished fourth. Aditya Patel was drive of the weekend, going from the back of the field P17 up to P5. And there you can see that Alex Aou and KOU had that coming together and did not finish. Rick Young got the wooden spoon in P15. As we move next to Japan, Alex Young takes a four-point lead over Frankie Chen. Aditya Patel salvaged something from the weekend. He's on 90 points with Thomas Fjordback. March Lee is just 20 points behind Alex Young. And Rahul Fry is back in the hunt with 74 points. Another great race weekend comes to a close with wins for Alex Yong and Marchi Lee. Next, we're heading to Japan for rounds 10 and 11. But before we go, it's time to tell you about all the social media campaigns that the Cup is running. In Taiwan, fans voted for Jeffrey Lee as their favorite driver, while here in Malaysia, they voted to chat online with Adita Patel. Make sure you go to the website audr8lmscup.com to follow all the action on Facebook, Weibo, WeChat and Instagram. And don't forget to scan the QR codes for exclusive content. We'll see you all very soon. Goodbye from Malaysia.